Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Bald Metal Nerd coming at you with another vid. Uh, I, of course, am con continuing my uh, lovely uh, Beginner's Guide to Great Sound. Uh, this is going to be part two, definitely one of the most important parts because I am talking about the item in your audio setup that is going to have the most effect on what you hear. Of course, I am talking about speakers and headphones, right? Um, and let me just start off this video by saying, if you are listening via the speaker built into your smartphone and or uh, tablet or laptop or whatever, if you're, or anything, if you're listening to built-in speakers with your device, stop because those speakers probably sound like absolute crap. If you're using the earbuds that came with your smartphone or MP3 player or whatever, same advice applies. They're probably going to sound like crap. Generally, that stuff does. Uh, it does work. You do hear sound, but the quality you get from it is going to be pretty bad. Um, you know, and uh, the next thing I'm going to say about speakers and headphones is every single different model is guaranteed to have its own sound signature. So let's say... You go to Manufacturer X, right? And uh, you look at Model 321 first, and then you maybe look at Model 456. I guarantee those two will sound different, even if they're by the same manufacturer. They might sound related, for lack of a better term, but they will sound different uh, because every model is designed a bit differently. They all have slightly different materials, blah, blah, freaking blah. Same thing with speakers, uh, you know they're all guaranteed to sound a little bit different. Um, now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off and say that it is cheaper and easier to get great sound purely out of headphones uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the price to performance ratio of headphones uh, generally, truthfully, crushes speakers right uh there is one extremely excellent pair of headphones that you can get for about 16 bucks that yes i will feature in this video i mean in in these 16 dollar headphones the sound on them is absolutely amazing that it costs 16 dollars. it's amazing the sound that you get i would call it really true high fidelity sound for that cost okay there's no speaker on earth that is going to sound truly excellent and amazing that costs $16 new for a pair of speakers. You may get some with a somewhat decent sound, and I will cover fairly cheap pair of speakers in this, but compared to the $16 headphones, I don't think they'll cut it. So um, the price to performance ratio is going to be better on headphones generally. Um, also, you don't have as many variables when it comes to headphones. I mean, the headphones go over your ears. There's no room interference or anything else. Um, and I mean, and you don't you don't have to worry about your room. And there's less elements that you have to worry about overall in the audio system to get great sound out of head, a pair of headphones. And lastly, generally, generally, headphones are going to be more detailed than your speakers. You're going to hear more. Uh, things in your music than what you might pick out with speakers. Again, these are all kind of generalities. Feel free to experiment around and see what you find, but this has definitely been my experience up to this point. So, um, that pretty much is kind of the intro part about, uh, you know, headphones. And, uh, you know, uh, let's see. What's my next... Now... Um, next note I want to say is if you do decide to go the uh, headphone route for high fidelity, um, I would recommend getting a headphone amp of some sort. Um, generally, a headphone amp will sound uh, better than the output that you get, you know, from let's say your laptop or smartphone or desktop or even what's built into a lot of AV receivers. A, head, a dedicated headphone amp will generally 
have a better sound than those things. Now, if you want to, you know, if, if all you want to do is listen to headphones and you don't care about speakers, you're probably okay just buying a headphone amp. But if you're like most people, right, um, what I would suggest stepping up to at that point instead of just a headphone amp, you might want to get something that does a few more functions beyond that. You might want to get something that um, has a DAC built into it. In fact, I would generally recommend that anyway, even if you are just going the headphone ramp, headphone ramp, headphone route, get one that is at minimum a headphone amp slash DAC at minimum. And if you want to go the speaker route, you're even better off buying something along the lines that has a headphone amp, uh, a DAC, and some sort of output to speakers, like the Audio Engine D1 is an excellent choice, for example. Now, that's not cheap, uh, and if you're just starting out, like you're just brand new to this hobby, you don't have to buy it right away. Don't feel that... Oh, he's saying I need you don't have to have one right away. I would really recommend experimenting with other things before you get the headphone amp. I'm just or DAC or whatever. I'm just kind of throwing it in here to kind of talk about, you know, how to really optimize your headphone listening. So anyway, uh moving on beyond that. Um let's see. Now uh, headphones can have a huge uh, range in price, right? Uh, the You can get cheap headphones. Now, I'm going to show off a pair of very cheap headphones right now. These headphones cost $15.99, okay? But they sound like they cost $100, bucks, right? Easily. They, the price to performance on these is absolutely incredible. These sound, in my opinion, like $100 headphones. The sound on these is insanely good. Um, so this is at the low end uh, for headphone costs. And of course, they go up to multiple thousands of dollars, right? And generally, as you go up the um, ladder, you get better sound. Um, not always. I mean, Good example of expensive headphones that aren't that great. Uh, Monster, of course. Or I'm sorry, uh, Beats. Beats by Dre. Uh, very notorious. Uh, high price. The sound quality is just meh, right? That's, that's a notorious one. The most famous example. And I think the Apple AirPods are ridiculously overpriced for what they deliver to. Basically, they give you crappy earbud sound that comes with an iPhone, a wired iPhone, but the convenience of them being wireless and all that makes them cost like a hundred and some dollars. That's extremely overpriced. Um, you know, but for the most part, as you go up in price, uh, you will get better sound. Now, you definitely can hit the point of diminishing returns uh, with spending on headphones, right? Uh, and it depends on what you're getting, but generally over about, once you get in the two to $300 range of headphones, right? Once you're, and that's definitely got a bit on the expensive side, in my opinion. You're spending that much on headphones and you know they're well-researched, sound good, blah, blah, blah. If you go, let's say you're two or three hundred dollars, right? And you really like the sound of your headphones. If you spend, let's let's say, you compare a thousand dollar pair of headphones to a two hundred dollar pair of headphones, will it sound five times better than those two hundred dollar pair of headphones? Probably not. It might sound a bit better, but will it sound eight hundred dollars better? Eh. Probably not. Again, and you know, in diminishing returns is really common. Uh, it's going to kind of be a theme that I talk about regularly uh, in this uh, video series. And you definitely hit it hard and fast uh, with headphones, right? 
so that's just something to keep in mind. You don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get really good sound. You can get good sound with these for a very low cost. Um, so uh, now you have tons of choices uh, with headphones. There's a million different styles of what you want to get. Um, the most common style, of course, are the uh, in-ear monitors or, you know, earbuds, if you will. Those are real common. Uh, you can get some really good ones uh, for about the same price. I think Monoprice has some uh, in-ear monitors for roughly this cost. Let's go ahead and just search it real quick. Ear monitors. And see, I think, I think they got some that are like this price. Okay, that's not, yeah, those are whatever. Um, anyway, but I personally don't really love this style of headphone very much. Uh, I don't find it comfortable to have things in my ears. I just don't care if it's on ear. Okay, whatever. So you get the idea. You know what they look like. They're by far the most popular type of headphone that exists right now, or the in ear headphones. They come with everything. A lot of people really seem to like them. I don't, because I don't like the comfort. But, a huge range of prices in that, yada, yada, yada. Next type, of course, are on-ear headphones, which are these. And, of course, the ear cuffs literally just sit on your headphones. Or on your headphones, oh, jeez. The ear cuffs sit on your ears, right? And, uh, there are, you can get some really good sound out of on-ear headphones. They can sound very good. But of course, my personal favorite type of headphone uh, is the over-ear headphone, which of course these are. And what over-ear means is your ears fit entirely inside the ear cup. Now, the main disadvantage of over-ear headphones are the size. Uh, but personally, I can deal with that because generally uh, I find them to be by far the most comfortable type of headphone. And generally, they have the best sound quality. Uh, so I will take a bulkier size to deal with the, um, you know, better sound quality and better comfort. To me, the trade-off is worth it. But yes, I will admit they are the biggest. And that does, it is a bit of a disadvantage, especially, you know, for mobile use. But it's not like you can't own more than one pair of headphones. Now, another note on headphones. Of course, nowadays... They're not all just simple devices that plug into a 3.5 millimeter or quarter inch jack. Oh no. Uh, we now, of course, have Bluetooth headphones, noise, can noise canceling, uh, blah, 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 right? Right out the ass. Now, here's the thing. Let's say you have a $50 pair of headphones, right? And you have headphone A that has Bluetooth built into it, and headphone B does not have Bluetooth built into it. They both cost $50. Well, for the most part, the $50 pair that does not have the Bluetooth, there of course are always exceptions, but for the most part, the one that doesn't have Bluetooth built into it is going to sound a lot better than the one that has Bluetooth built into it. Why is that, you ask? Well, obviously, some of the, re some of the engineering cost had to go to implementing the bluetooth there was some research cost manufacturing cost 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 right so the fact that it has bluetooth built into it is going to take away some of the money that was spent on these headphones away from the audio and towards those other features uh same thing with noise canceling right and something to keep in mind is blue like i said in my last video Bluetooth sounds worse than wired. Even the very best Bluetooth sounds worse than a wire. It just doesn't sound as good yet. Now, that may change in the future, but as of right now, Bluetooth is just simply worse. And keep in mind, if you're listening over Bluetooth or noise canceling, ha have noise cancellation on, it will change the sound of your headphones. It just will, period. Now, whether that's good or bad is going to, of course, be entirely up to you. Uh, so let's see. Oh, the next uh, question we have um, with the full size. This this only applies to over ear, by the way. This next part. Uh, the next question is: Do you want to go with closed or open headphones? Well, 
The difference between the two is these obviously are uh, closed back headphones. They have the plastic covering, which basically blocks uh, inside noise from getting into your headphones, nor can anybody hear it coming out of your headphones. But the other one, of course, is open ear, right? Here's, here's an example of an open ear headphone, whatever. The Sennheisers, right? Those are open ear. And what those mean is basically they have a grill on them. So um, you'll hear sound coming into the headphone and going out of the headphone. So basically it works that way. It's like it just it, 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 it pa passes sound through, right? Uh, as far as which one you prefer, that's largely going to be down to personal preference. Um, you know, it's generally closed headphones have better bass response for the most part, uh, but they tend to have a more in your head type of sound. Uh, the sound stage on them does not tend to be nearly as good as it is on open headphones. On open headphones, uh, a lot of people are saying, uh, you know, they're more natural. Uh, it sounds more like speakers in the room rather than an in your head type of sound. So, which one you go with is largely going to depend A, on where you're listening, and B, what your uh, personal preferences are. Um, personally, it might be worth it to get. Now, you don't have to spend $500 on a pair of. I know that's what's popping up here, but you certainly don't have to spend that much to get open ear headphones. You can get uh, some pretty good ones for under $100. So don't think you have to spend this much. You certainly don't. It's just the first thing that came up in Google and I clicked on it and we got a picture. So, you know. But from what I understand, these are really good headphones. Whatever. I don't own a pair, but I've heard good things about them. Um, you know, and that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, now, let's see. Is there anything else I want to say about headphones? Um, no, that's pretty much it. Uh, what I have to say about headphones, it's kind of, I've more or less covered all the options, you know, talked about the different types, yada, 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 and, uh, you know, made one recommendation just because if you're brand new to the hobby and you're not looking to spend a lot, this is an absolutely great starting place. Now, done talking about headphones, uh, for the moment. Now, we're going to talk about if you go the speaker route you really have a lot of options, okay? Um, let's see. Now, uh, obviously with speakers, you have a ton of options, right? And uh, the, the very simplest, very simplest speaker setup you're gonna find are um, USB powered speakers. And that's assuming you only listen on a computer, right? Let's see. Uh, apparently, these are somewhat decent, right? From what I but I, I've heard, I've heard these. They don't sound that great. Now these are rated as quote decent entry level uh, USB powered speakers. Um, both of these. Now, in my opinion. The sound quality on these is pretty mediocre. Yes, it is a step up from whatever's built into your laptop, but it is not, in my opinion, remotely satisfying fidelity. Okay, now there are some decent USB powered speakers out there. But they are fairly costly. You're talking to get good, what I would call really good sound out of USB power speakers. You're going to have to spend between two to three hundred dollars. Not cheap, uh, you know. And that sound, you're going to you you're going to get better sound via other methods for that kind of spend anyway. So I can't really recommend going this route. The only way I would recommend USB powered speakers is if you basically consign it to a secondary computer, right? Or if you want to just have music on in the background and you're not paying attention or you just want to hear, you know, 
a YouTube video sounds slightly better than when it does over a laptop speaker, get these. But I don't think, at least at the present moment, and I don't think this is going to change anytime particularly soon, that USB-powered speakers are really what I would call a serious uh, way to go about getting high-fidelity sound. They just aren't. Um, they, you know, uh, they're great for convenience, and they are going to be probably your simplest option, but sound quality just unless you're willing to spend a lot of money, just really isn't going to be very much to write home about. Now, next up, we're of course going to talk about the most popular type of speaker on earth right now, by far. And of course, I am talking about Bluetooth speakers, right? And there's a million of them. Uh, you know, and there's a huge range of prices on Bluetooth speakers. The cheapest ones are $15, right? And those can sound about like this, you know, and they go all the way up to multi, multi thousands of dollars, right? And I'm sure the multi thousand dollar ones sound tremendous. I don't know. I've never heard one, but I can't, I'd imagine they're pretty good. Uh, and they come in a huge variety of form factors. Now, Bluetooth speakers definitely have some advantages to them. Uh, a lot of them have built-in rechargeable batteries, so they're portable. You can take them pretty much anywhere and use them. So that is definitely a uh, upside to having them around. Uh, let's see what else they got. They they usually have multiple inputs for the, most of the time. Most of the time, they have at, at least if you spend more than a minimal amount. Most of them have Bluetooth input as well as a wired input of some sort. Uh, so. You can usually hook up more than one thing to it if you want to. So they got some versatility. Um, but major disadvantage on them, in my opinion, is generally the price to performance ratio on them is kind of similar to USB powered speakers. It's not good to get really, really, really good sound out of a Bluetooth speaker. You have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, because I've heard a really wide array of Bluetooth speakers and even on an expensive Bluetooth speaker listening over Bluetooth it still sounds kind of shitty right as uh, you plug a wire and it sounds a lot better but but it, over Bluetooth it still isn't that great um, and what you have to spend to get good sound out of them in my opinion frankly is too much for what you get like if you spend three hundred dollars on a pair of or i'm sorry on a bluetooth speaker it's not going to sound as good as a speaker setup that i'll be showing you later in the video it just won't you the price to performance ratio in my opinion is very poor on bluetooth speakers so again what do i think bluetooth speakers are useful for i think they're useful for casual listening uh you want to share some music with some of your friends or whatever blah 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 you want to maybe listen to a couple things on them Yes, they are an upgrade from USB powered speakers because they they got some more versatility. Their sound quality is somewhat better, but again, I don't consider it to be serious, uh, you know, option for if you want to get good sound. It's just, in my opinion, just not. It's they're okay, but nothing, nothing spectacular. So. What's the next option we're going to talk about? Well, uh, by far, uh, the next option is similar, very similar to the Bluetooth speaker, okay? But, of course, every time we're going up, we're going up very slightly in complexity and less in convenience. Uh, the next one in complexity and less in convenience is by far the most popular option for specifically home listening nowadays, right? Lots and lots and lots and lots of people have these in their house. Um, really common, of course, I am talking about sound bars, right? And again, they have a lot of the same same problems as uh, Bluetooth speakers. Um, the price to performance ratio on them tends to be not great. You generally have to spend a whole lot of money on a sound bar to get really good sound, okay? 
Uh, that's one of the main issues with it. But there are some benefits to sound bars. Uh, most of them come with some sort of subwoofer, so the bass response will probably be a bit better than uh, you know other options so far. Um, usually it has several inputs, so you can usually hook up several devices to it. Uh, a lot of them have uh, built-in like surround sound decoders, so they will be you know even more versatile. But again, the same problem: to get really good sound out of them, you gotta spend a bunch of money. And even if you spend a bunch of money, it's still gonna sound worse than a cheaper traditional speaker setup. It just is. I've never heard a sound bar sound better than anything that I that, that I have that I spent less money on. It's just yet to happen. So sound bars, I guess the main thing I can re recommend them for, yes, they're definitely better than like what's built into your TV or your laptop or your phone or whatever. They're going to sound better than all of that because TV speakers suck too. Uh, but... Uh, I can't really recommend sound bars for much more than like you know an answer you know a TV that you just want to hear something sound a bit better out of and you're con constrained for space. They're great for saving space. They have less wires generally, and they generally take up less room than a standard speaker setup. So that's going to be my big recommendation. Uh, you know slash talk about sound bars. Now uh, after that. I am going to talk about dedicated uh, going up. I'm going to talk about uh, speakers that are um, uh, da, 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 da. computer speakers, for lack of a better term, right? Um, now, these start to look more like traditional speaker systems more than the other things we've talked about so far, right? Generally, they're going to have um, now they're going to have a sub a subwoofer, a lot of them, and they will have two satellite speakers, as opposed to you know just the bar and the and the subwoofer. And there's tons of advantages to these. One, this is really the first what I would consider decent option that we've looked at so far that actually has stereo separation between the speakers, right? Um, with sound bars and Bluetooth speakers, there's no stereo separation because all of the speakers are in one housing, right? So there's no distance between the speakers. There's no stereo separation. There's no real stereo image in these things generally, okay? It's just like listening to one speaker. It, it, there's just not separation there because physically there can't be uh, unless you have a really advanced thing fooling your ears or something if it has some really advanced processing built into it that's possible but again the cost you get that it's going to be up there so uh, i think these are a great these uh speaker systems that you can get that are computer speakers this is an example of an inexpensive one right obviously i pulled this one up for a reason it's 25 bucks and from what I understand, now I don't own a pair of these, but from what I understand, the sound is really, really, really good. Okay, uh, and again, if you're new, you might want to start with something like this if you're not looking to spend big money. I think this would be a great jumping on point, right? Uh, the, another benefit of these is general, a lot of them have multiple inputs. I'm gonna, Now I'm going to show off one here that's a bit higher on the price scale and this one i actually do own but i think it is a tremendously uh, great <coughs> uh it's a really great system this one has two inputs on it and the sound quality that it does is absolutely phenomenal uh, you know, it's 160 bucks. Yeah, I know that's a bit pricey, but the, the sound on them is absolutely out of this world. I think that's definitely worth uh, the cost. Honestly, I think I don't think that's out of line for what you get for this. 
So obviously there's a huge range of prices on this type of setup. Um, and there's, of course, there's the, oh, that's the wrong button there. Didn't want to sign in. Going even further up the scale, I know I'm going kind of on about these. Let's see what, oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, there it is. These have even more inputs on them, and uh, I don't own a pair of these, but as you can see, we got tons and tons of options. So you have a whole lot of options depending on which route you want to go. Uh, I'm just kind of showing this as a plethora of stuff because it's just a world of options out there going this route. And to me, this kind of setup makes sense uh, for... Uh, what I would call near field listening and that is basically you're sitting at your desk and you have speakers that are near you and you're listening these are gonna sound tremendously awesome and yes these I would say definitely qualify as high fidelity sound no you don't have to spend four hundred dollars to get high fidelity sound you can spend these qualify as high fidelity sound I would say these qualify this qualifies as really good sound, I would say. Is it high fidelity? Eh. But is it pretty damn good? Yes, it is. So again, lots of options there. And then finally, the last option I'm going to talk about now, of course, is traditional speakers. Okay. Um, from what I, you know, Again, and you don't have to spend a ton and ton and tons of money on traditional speakers to get great sound either. And yes, I would argue that these are probably going to be high fidelity speakers. They're going to sound tremendously good, right? Um, if you're new to the hobby, this is a great way to start with traditional speakers. Now, traditional speakers do definitely have some disadvantages. Uh, probably one of the biggest disadvantages of traditional speakers is they are definitely more complex than any other option we've looked at thus far. Uh, you know, you have to get a separate amplifier for them, so it's another thing to buy. Um, you know, you have to worry about impedance and uh, it, it's, it's, it is definitely more complicated, but the biggest advantage to going with something like this is you have infinite, um, that's the word I'm looking for, infinite custom, custom built, you can customize it uh, as much as you want. You can start off with something like this, you can upgrade to a more expensive pair later, whatever, uh, but the sound you're going to get out of pair, a pair of these and like say this $25 amp, yeah, because you're going to need an amplifier for it. It only has one input on it, but again, it's a $25 amp. What do you want, right? Uh, you're going to get just tremendously excellent fidelity out of out of a setup like this. It's going to sound at least as good as that $150 set that I showed you, the Clips Pro Mini. It's going to sound at least as good as that. Maybe even slightly better in some of the details. Now, won't have as much bass because uh, it doesn't have a subwoofer. But some of the details, the mid-range might be better on these. I don't know. I don't own a pair of these to compare them. But I'm just saying that it's it's highly... It would not surprise me at all if some of the audio on this was better than, than the clips. Because, again, you the price to performance on traditional speakers ratio, if you buy the right ones, can be extremely good. Uh, just as, you know, not, not as good as headphones. These aren't honestly as good as this setup would sound. It probably won't sound as good as the mono price 8323s. It, they probably just, in reality, won't. But they'll probably sound pretty damn nice to your ears. Let's see, what else do we have going on here? Just bear with me here. Um, now, um, you can, of course, 
Uh, if you don't want to go the new route, you can always look around for used stuff. Used is always an option. Uh, if you are going to go used, honestly, I'd recommend uh, looking on Craigslist or going to garage sales or whatever. Generally, you're going to find some bargains there. Uh, and, of course, you can always test the equipment before you buy it. Make sure it works. Listen to it a little bit. See if you like it. If you want to go used, that is definitely a route you can go. Of course, it's not as convenient as buying new because you buy new, you know, you're just going to deliver it, you're going to have it, and that's going to be it. But used is definitely a way where you can probably get a better class of something for a lower cost. Uh, so it's definitely a um, very viable option. So anyway... Uh, this pretty much covers uh, what I did want to cover with, you know, speakers and headphones. That's pretty much it. That that's that's the whole nine yards. That pretty much wraps this up. So, uh, lastly, in my I just want to say in my next video, what I'm going to talk about next are, uh, for lack of a better term, the electronics that you use, like amps receivers, blah, 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 blah. That's next because that equipment is important as well. So anyway, that's pretty much going to wrap this up. As always, if you like this, thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I hope to see you guys in the next video of the series. All right, guys. Uh, as I was about to upload this video and I was reviewing it, I can't believe I left this out uh, in the talk about traditional standard speakers, uh, right? Basically, what I was talking about in the last segment. Um, there, of course, are two styles of speakers that you need to consider if you are looking at, you know, the traditional amp and passive speakers. You have to consider the differences between for lack of a better term, bookshelf versus either tower or floor standing speakers. Um, what are the main differences besides size, right? Well, most of the differences, unfortunately, relate to size. Um, generally, tower speakers are going to be better for larger rooms. So if you have a big room that you want to completely fill a sound, you're probably going to be better off with uh, floor standing or tower speakers. They're going to have great bass response, and they're really going to fill a room up with sound um, exceptionally well, right? Uh, and you may or may not even need a subwoofer if you're using them. But of course, you can, of course, you use the subwoofer. I'm not saying you can't, but it's less needed with floor standing speakers um and bookshelf speakers uh might fit in better in say like a home theater type of setup so it's not two of your speakers aren't like overpowering your other channels or whatever it's all a balancing act um you know but there's no hard and fast rule on this uh there some schools of thought are Spend if you get more expensive bookshelf speakers, they're and you pair it up with a subwoofer. It's going to sound even. It's going to sound more detailed and better than floor standing speakers for the same price. So there's lots and lots and lots of different ways to look at this. Unfortunately, there I can't sit here and tell you. Yes, you should always get this in this situation, and always that in that situation. Unfortunately, the answer to which is better is sadly going to be. It depends, and that's part of the complexity of standard speakers. Um, I guess the best general rule I can tell you is if you have a large room and you want to completely fill it with sound and really rock the house, you're probably going to be better off with floor standing speakers. Uh, if you're going to be sitting somewhat near to them, you don't need to completely fill the sound up. Maybe fill the room up, maybe you want to get slight, or just you have space concerns, get slightly smaller speakers, uh, and they'll sound excellent. Now, bookshelf speakers can easily fill a room. Don't don't get me wrong. Bookshelf speakers can fill a room with sound just as well as floor standing speakers. They can play very loud. So don't think that that's not the case. It certainly is. But physics kind of wins out here, right? Because... Sound waves are air, 
right? That it's this actual air that your speakers are pushing out towards you, right? And generally, the bigger the speakers are, the more air they're going to be able to push out at you and the more sound overall you're going to be able to get. So if I were you, uh, if you're looking to get into this, do some research about the differences. Just do like, you know, bookshelf versus tower speakers. Google it. Read up on it. See what applies to your situation better. Sorry for the addendum. See you guys in the next video.